the Wyoming Republican Senator Cynthia Lummis, what she makes of this back and forth. But particularly, Senator, it's always good to have you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'd like My to pleasure, get Neil. your thoughts on. Thank you again. Uh, this idea of a federal gas tax holiday for up to three months, would you support that? That's just a stupid idea. 18 cents uh, off a gallon of gas uh, will not even take our gas prices back to their high in 2008 and 2009. This is rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The Biden administration caused this mess. It started on day one of the Biden administration. My state is the largest net exporter of energy in the United States. What did he do? He took the uh, executive order that would prevent us from drilling for oil and gas on federal lands. He has stopped the quarterly lease sales on federal lands, including offshore. Uh, the lawsuits from the environmental community block permits to drill. Uh, it's an all-out attack on U.S. production of oil and gas. That's what was keeping the price down. That's what was keeping our economy going. That's what was keeping our tax structure strong. This is all a self-inflicted wound by the Biden administration. All right, now, you know the back and forth on this, Senator. Uh, they blame much of this on Vladimir Putin. We know about half the increase came prior to the first Russian boots getting even near Ukraine. Be that as it may, we have this uh, in oil executive powwow with the energy secretary of the Energy Department, not at the White House. I found that interesting uh, that if this were such an urgent problem, as the president clearly seemed to indicate it was and is, why isn't he meeting with them? Why isn't it at the White House? Well, exactly right. I think it's because he does know that he's responsible for what has happened here. You know, you can tweak it around the edges. You can try to blame Putin. None of that is real. And the American people know it. Let me tell you something, Neil. On my ranch in Cheyenne, Wyoming, we would be pulling into the hayfields right now. In my entire 67 years of life, we've never missed a haying season. I don't think we're going to put up hay this year because the price of diesel and gasoline is so high and we're in a drought, so the hay crop is so small that it's not worth pulling into the field at gas prices this high and diesel prices this high. We'll take our chances. We'll buy expensive hay this fall to take into the winter. This is unprecedented. It's affecting everyone in every industry. Industry. It's affecting tourism, uh, and this is all a self-imposed wound by the Biden administration. Having said all of that, Senator, uh, Art Laffer, you know very well, of course, uh, not exactly a liberal, uh, but he said, you know, if he were advising the president, uh, given his list of choices to ease the pain at the pump, he certainly would be talking about more production, but he would go ahead with this gas tax holiday uh, to give Americans some reprieve. Uh, what do you think of that? You know, I, 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 like you, think the world of Art Laffer. I disagree with him on this point. Uh, it's too little, it's too late, uh, and it will impose burdens on our highway trust fund, which is already uh, go, heading for insolvency. So it, it's just the wrong approach to take, and its effect overall on our ability this summer to get around and, and, uh, and, and afford things is just minuscule. Senator, while I have you on another topic, the, uh, the bipartisan uh, gun package they're working out of the Senate, uh, it looks like they've got 14 Republicans supporting it. It's a long way from done. The devil, as you often remind me, is in the details. But as it stands now, what you've seen now, would you support that measure? Yeah, the answer is no. Uh, and I'm just devastated for the parents in Uvalde. Um, I have co-sponsored a bill with Roger Marshall uh, that would help harden schools. Uh, I am supporting a bill by Ted Cruz and my fellow Wyoming Senator John Barrasso that would put more law enforcement uh, out there. But the bill that is, uh, we're going to get to vote on, and by the way, we can't even try to amend it, um, is one that will impose restrictions 
uh, on gun rights, uh, and my home state of Wyoming uh, has a gun culture uh, surrounding hunting and self-protection, uh, and this is uh, just not something that Wyoming people uh, can support. There's nothing in there that would limit gun sales, as you know, uh, Senator. They'll certainly tighten them up for, 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 you know, red flag cases and all of that. Uh, does that not do it for you? Is it that your fear is it would lead to, to limiting guns? The problem is the ex parte taking of guns uh, without uh, adequate due process. Uh, and uh, I get why uh, the, the people who crafted this bill don't want to come with a national standard because there are, oh, maybe 19 states that have red flag laws with different standards. Uh, but the fact is the problem with some of those state standards is you can take a gun away from someone uh, without a hearing, without adequate due process, uh, and uh, that's just inconsistent with good quality Second Amendment rights. So I, I, I applaud them for trying. I understand and appreciate their efforts. Uh, but it, the mental health components of this bill, if I could vote on those alone, uh, I would. In fact, if I could have separated the mental health components of this bill from the rest of the bill, I would have voted for the mental health components of the bill. They won't allow us any amendments. This is a take it or leave it vote, up or down, and for that reason, uh, I'm, I'm a no. All right. We'll watch it very, very closely. Uh, Senator Cynthia Lum, it's great catching up with you again. You as well, Neil. Thank you.